Hi everyone, I'm just gonna jump right into the video because I think somebody needs this today. I think someone is at the very edge of their breaking point today. I think someone is tired of being empty today and they don't know how much longer that they can take it anymore. I just honestly cannot waste another second or another day not sharing what God wants me to share for people who have serious anxiety for teenagers, college students, for anyone at any point in their life. Not just worry, but deep-rooted anxiety, physical symptoms, pain, a constant burden. I know anxiety because for the past two and a half years, I have been dealing with it. I had my first panic attack about two years ago. I didn't know it was a panic attack of the first time. In August of 2000. 19, I went through a four months of severe anxiety with physical symptoms and irrational fears about my health and shortness of breath and throat tightening symptoms and constant battles going on in my mind. And a few weeks ago, guys, I tried to film a video sharing my testimony on that journey. I just had a huge breakthrough with it two months ago and Jesus has completely healed me and freed me from some really irrational triggers that I had. And I was making this video to share with you my testimony and I still want to do that at some point. But y'all, I prayed about the video so much and it turned out to be a mess. It did not go well. I was filming in my car and me and Sarah have made videos in the car before, but for some reason, my car was so sweaty and hot that by the end of the video, I was drenched in sweat. My hair looked like I just got out of the shower. I had to stop the video multiple times because I was so distracted by how hot I was. I see now why that video wasn't meant to go up at the time that it was because I was talking in that video as if the anxiety was totally over. <sighs> well, as if I had been completely healed and I no longer had worry or anxiety. And y'all, not a coincidence, for the past two weeks after like months of being good, my anxiety resurged all over again. I just graduated May 3rd and after that, I started to feel these physical symptoms, these anxiety attacks that I thought I was done with. And I think God is bringing me or has brought me back through them again, because each time I go through it, I learn something new about God that I have to share with those who are struggling. About last week, I would say, or maybe a few days ago, I woke up in the middle of the night in panic, thinking that I was dying. I had this shortness of breath. This sounds crazy to anyone who doesn't have anxiety, but for anyone who deals with anxiety, you know that it doesn't matter how many times you've felt the same symptoms, it still feels real. And I just thought to myself, am I dying? Am I just gonna stop breathing right now? What's gonna happen? And I knew it was anxiety, but I didn't know. And I started to pray. It's like three o'clock in the morning, guys. And I said, God, why am I so afraid of death? Why am I afraid? Because this is what the gospel says, that we are all doomed for an eternity in hell because of our sin. But God is so both just and loving and merciful that he stepped in and paid the price for me. Jesus Christ on the cross, he died. On the third day, he rose again. And that death was a payment for all my sins, so I don't have to end up in an eternity in hell when I believe in Jesus Christ. So I believe that. And now I believe that when I die, I'm going to be in heaven with him. And it's going to be better than even life is like here. It says in Revelations that 
This says, this is what the Bible says heaven is gonna be like, and please hold on, even if you're not a Christian, just hold on, okay? Just picture this for a second. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And when it describes heaven, it says, The wall around the city, so around heaven, was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for the temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light and its lamp the Lamb. There will be no night there, neither anyone that does what is detestable or false. I skipped around a little bit through Revelations to just give you a picture of heaven, okay? So whether you're religious or not, let's think about this logically. I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking, God, that's what I believe. That's what I believe. So why am I so afraid of death? Why should I be? Logically speaking, why would I have a fear or an anxiety about death if that's what comes afterward. I don't want to be a hypocrite, guys. I want to be consistent in what I believe. And me worrying about me dying doesn't seem consistent with the belief system of the gospel. So I asked God that, I prayed, I said, God, why am I so afraid of this? The next morning I woke up and I didn't know where to read in the Bible. And just stay with me here, because this is crazy. I just flipped open to the end of Luke, so Luke around chapter 24, which is the last chapter in Luke. I read through Jesus being crucified, him being resurrected, the gospel. But then I get to the end where after he's been resurrected, he reappears to his 12 disciples. And let me just read this to you, okay? I read this the morning after I asked God, why am I so afraid of death? As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace to you but they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate before them. So I'm reading this and I see that he asked them, do you have anything to eat? And I just get this thought in my mind. Why would Jesus ask them that? I believe that every word in this book called the Bible is meaningful and there's something to be learned even if we don't understand it. I believe that Jesus is intentional with what he says. I don't think he just says things just to say them. And there were many times throughout his life where it's recorded that his disciples were hungry and he would say things like, man does not live off bread alone, but off every word that comes from the mouth of God. So also if I believe he's, which he is the son of God, if he's fully divine, why is he thinking about food? That's just so random to me. Why is he asking that? I reread it and I looked back. His disciples thought that he was just a spirit. That's why they were afraid. Jesus is like resurrected from the cross and they're looking at him and they're thinking this is just like a ghost or maybe it is Jesus, but he's not the Jesus we knew when he was alive. He is just this ethereal spiritual being and Jesus is trying to convince them that look at me, a spirit, he says a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. He's trying to convince them, guys, I wasn't just resurrected in my spirit, my body has been resurrected. This is familiar to you. And that's why he asks, have you anything here to eat? Because he was resurrected in his body and his body has hunger pains too. Don't you get hungry sometimes? He's flesh and bones. When he died on the cross and rose again, he's trying to convince them, guys, this didn't just happen in the spiritual realm. Look at me, I'm a body, I'm a being. 
And all of a sudden it hit me. Even though I believe the gospel, the idea of dying and being in heaven is so scary to me because the process is not known to me. It seems very foreign. When I picture heaven, I think of the word ethereal like I just used. Ethereal, spiritual, this place that's like a dream. In a way, you're thinking it doesn't feel as real as life does here. When we say Jesus died on the cross and rose again, it means he literally died and he rose in his body. There was a real human being named Jesus Christ who walked around after everyone saw him die three days later. It didn't just happen in this spiritual realm. It wasn't a vision that the disciples saw. It wasn't a mere dream or an illusion. When he appeared to them, he appeared to them just like you and me if we ran into each other. He said, touch me and see. You could touch his hand. He was real. The resurrection was really real. And all of a sudden that gave me peace about death because The process is familiar to me. Jesus said this, because I live, you shall live also. In the same way that Jesus lived after he died, those who believe in him will live also. And it's going to be just as real as life is right now. If you're someone who has your faith in Jesus and you have anxiety about death, maybe it's because you don't see that this is going to be just as familiar as the life you're living now. You need to trust him with your life. Your body is going to rise again. <sighs> but if you don't know Jesus and you're watching this, then you need to realize that the Bible says that there's a judgment day everyone has to give an account to God as to what they did. And that day is not going to be what we picture when we picture the spiritual realm. It's going to be just as real as life is right now. Imagine in your real life how you are right now. Not in some other realm that you can't picture having to give an account to God of what you've done. When you picture it like that, it seems a lot more urgent that you better figure out what you're gonna say to him. And I wanna tell you guys, I don't have a single thing to say to God on behalf of what I've done, except for but Jesus. But Jesus, it's not about what I've done, it's what Jesus did for me. If you have anxiety and you're struggling with the fear of death, I just wanted to share this word with you. Death in life after death with Jesus' promise is not unfamiliar. It's not going to be unreal. It's going to be real. The same way that Jesus rose again is the same way that we rise again, which is a very real reality. And if you don't know God, if you haven't accepted Jesus into your life and you're dealing with anxiety and a fear of death, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that you ended up on this video and you are hearing it now. That when you accept Christ, there is no reason to fear death. But if you don't accept him and you reject his message, you're going to be held captive to a lifelong fear of death. That's what you will serve. You'll be a slave to your fear of death your whole life. And it's valid because without Christ, we have a reason to be afraid. But he doesn't want us to be afraid. The Bible says it's not his will that any one of us should perish. He doesn't want you to reject his message. He doesn't delight in you turning him down. He wants your heart. He hasn't forgotten about you. He loves you. And he doesn't want you to live captive to this fear. He wants to reach down and save you, but he can only do that. If you yourself want to be saved, if you deal with anxiety and this video is tugging on your heart, consider the cost and what it would look like to follow Jesus. Think about this video. Think about the cross. Think about what he did for you. Ask God to reveal to you 
the gospel. Because the Bible says that when we understand the gospel, it's not revealed to us by just people telling you. It's revealed to us by the hand of God. And I don't want you to live in fear of death. And I refuse to live in fear of death. (sighs) But what that means is praying. And what that means is remembering that the next life is going to be just as real as this one. I hope this word encouraged someone with anxiety. I hope that it pushes someone to pursue Jesus today. This is not fluffy stuff. This is real life. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're 13 or you're 37. We all die someday. And we all just run around in this American culture pretending that that doesn't happen. And we build up empires and kingdoms of careers and business and money and family. For what? To just leave it all behind? That doesn't make sense to me. But it's because if you don't know Jesus, there's no solution. There's no end game here. That's it. But I don't want that for you and God doesn't want that for you. So stop taking pills to numb the pain. Stop looking for all these self-care resources, these people to talk to, all the things that the world recommends to fix the behavior of anxiety and get to the root, get of what's in your heart. Because what's in your heart is a fear of death. And I'm sorry, but anxiety medications don't fix that, okay? Therapy can't fix that because a therapist is just a person like you. We have to cut to the heart deep of what's going on here. And I know that anxiety is a hormonal imbalance. I know because I've dealt with it for the past two years. But y'all, don't you know that anxiety has triggers? And don't you know that chronic stress imbalances don't just come out of nowhere? Stress doesn't come out of nowhere. We all have deep things deep in our hearts. And whether you've known God for years, and you're running from those deep things, or you're young and you're confused and you're looking for advice on your anxiety, we all have things deep in our hearts. So ask God why you're anxious. Ask him to give you peace. Go to the source of peace. Find rest for your soul in Jesus. And the only way you can do that is being sure about your eternity. Imagine how amazing it is to not fear death that I could die tomorrow and it's fine. It's fine because for me to live, that's to work and tell people about Jesus. And for me to die would be even more amazing at its right time because there is an eternity of life after this. Wake up, stop running from the worry, from the pain, get to the heart and get to the heart with God because there is a solution for your fear of death. That's the thing. There is an answer that nobody else on this earth can give you through just comforting you and telling you you're going to be fine because one day you're not going to be fine. We all die one day. One day you're seriously not going to be fine. And what are you going to do with that? You're just going to accept it? Or are you going to find a life that says, on the day that I'm not fine and it is my time to go, I'll be okay because I have peace and I'm reconciled to God through Jesus who loves you so much. He loves you so much that he put it on my heart to make this video for you. And I do not take that lightly. So please comment down below if you have any questions about anxiety, about my experience, about the message that I just shared. I got very passionate because it's just so real. I don't want you to run. And yes, just ask questions before you make assumptions. We say a lot of things and if they throw you off or if they cut you a little bit and you're feeling like writing criticism or something negative before just asking a question, we'll still love you, but hey, maybe we can actually find some peace and you can get the answer you were looking for if you just ask. So if anything I said in this video was confusing to you, just comment and let's talk about it. And yeah, I just jump right into it. God sent this video for you if you've been watching to this point, I know that. Don't wait another second. This is not fluff. And thank you.
God loves you. Bye. Oh.